I cannot believe that Vermisterra has gotten rid of this chlorosis on this Laverne Red in just 10 days. Now this dragon fruit is kind of root bound. It was a recent donation and it had some flower buds and it set fruit. So I treated it with Vermisterra and it had a lot of severe yellowing and that was just 10, 11 days ago. So wow, amazing product. So a little bit about our dragon fruit farm. We like to be organic. We use Fox Farm potting soil and a bit of composted chicken manure. And I was making my own worm casting tea by steeping worm castings. But then I came across a product that uh, my neighbor is in the citrus industry and he basically forced me to try this product here and said it saved entire citrus farms. I couldn't believe it. So he gave me a bottle and I am now a fan of Vermis Terra. Now Vermis is worm, Terra is earth. I really like their symbol there. Super cool. And they're a little family worm farm out in Southern California. And they make really, really high quality worm castings. And my favorite is that compost tea I'm gonna show you more about. So this is their standard grade. It's odorless and it has a little bit of particles of organic material and it's wonderful stuff. I, I think it's phenomenal, but this is their premium grade. And again, it's odorless and it's almost like really soft coffee grounds. And when you water it in, it waters into the almost immediately. Wow. So I really think that's great. High quality worm castings. So I've been using these for this growing season and I'm thoroughly impressed with the results. Look, this may not look too impressive to you, but this plant was on, I, I cut it off of the mother plant ap uh, in April. So it's two months and a few days old and look at that growth. And the cutting behind it off of the same plant has topped the trellis in two months. I cannot believe that. I've never had growth like that in one season. And I really think it has to do with using these new products here. So let me go show you more about them because I actually contacted them and they were so nice. They're willing to, they were willing to ship me out several of their products for an honest review. So I'm going to be doing experiments with them. I'm going to try these products on uh, the thousand varieties or so of plants to see how does bamboo, how does palm, how do palm trees, how do different plants respond to this worm castings. So let's go learn more about it. So personally, this is my favorite product here. It has a shelf life of about a year. It has beneficial microbes that are dormant until the moment you add water. So you don't wanna add water to this product until you are using it. Now it does have a bit of a funk in a good way. It's very earthy and natural, but it does have a pretty unique scent, but I personally like it. Now, what else I can say is you can use this as a foliar spray and you don't have to do that kind of, I hate to say, trendy uh, tea batch where you have to mix a bunch of th synthetic chemical fertilizers. All you need to do is add water to this and apply it. And check out their usage guide. You can see that it actually, it's, it's really hard to overuse it. Meaning that depending on the type of plant, you could use it every few weeks to every week. And you could also use uh, a ratio of maybe one ounce to one gallon or up to six to seven ounces per gallon without burning the plant. That's amazing. So I really, really enjoy the soil amendment. This is the magic stuff in my opinion when I applied it to the dragon fruit. It almost seems like it allows the uh, Fox Farm soil to break down and allows those plants to access the nutrients. So I've seen just a huge change just using this product. And this is the other half of the equation, the earthworm castings. Now look at the MPK. It's less than one, one, one. So we really need to kind of unlearn what we've been taught about chemical fertilizers. So something uh, like this can be used much more frequently than say a synthetic fertilizer. Uh, they use red wiggler worms to create these castings. And inside the castings, there are dozens of essential nutrients um, and vitamins, minerals that plants and both plants and animals need. So there's even probiotics and beneficial uh, fungi inside 
these castings as well. So they're very fine, that's the premium grade. And this is the standard grade. And they're both extremely fine, high quality products that water into your soil really quickly. I like them a lot. Now you can even add them to coconut core. So at a ratio of three parts coconut core to one part worm castings, you can produce a very awesome growing medium. And it's not gonna burn your plants, it's gonna be great for aeration. And then you can even apply the worm casting tea to that medium. So I'm gonna do some experiments with uh, dragon fruit cuttings, doing soil, fox farms, and then using this growing medium. So I'm interested to see the results and we'll post those in the future. So look at this infograph. You can see that Vermistera earthworm castings will increase soil fertility. They're safe for pets, kids, pollinators. Your yields will increase. It's all natural. It contains beneficial microbes. It's good for the planet. It will not cause leaf burn. It will increase aeration and you'll even conserve water because it will help to retain more moisture in your soil. And no odor. I like that. So Vermistera also produces a product called a hydrospiral, and it's a deep root irrigation tube. They have two sizes. This is the three inches. Those are three inches there. And here is the two inch. And so basically what it is is an apparatus where you're gonna install it near the base of the plant vertically like this and it has a mesh tube. So when you bury it in the ground, you're gonna stick a drip head at the top. See the little holes there? And the water will just kind of spiral down through this tube, and it's gonna be a more efficient way to get water down to the root zone. So it will minimize evaporation and runoff. And believe it or not, this will allow more aeration into the soil as well. So with, with increased aeration, you're going to have uh, more beneficial uh, microbes in, introduced down into the root systems as well. So you'll have healthier trees or plants uh, using less water. So I'm really excited to try these hydrospirals. So I'm noticing some awesome results using the castings and compost tea on our succulents as well the Sechevaria. They just seem to have a much better color in just a few weeks of using it. Now in addition, the pineapple, our sugar baby. We did a video on this and you can tell there's a huge difference in the leaf color. I mean it's just so much more green and healthy looking. It's very very happy. So give us a like and a subscribe and follow us on this journey and experimentation using these products on lots of different varieties of plants. Good morning. Today I'm excited to teach you how I use earthworm casting tea by Vermistera and earthworm castings. I really like their products and I've seen some great results here. So look at this ax cutting here. I took it from the plant and the mother plant on April 19th and these two cuttings are extremely vigorous and I've been using Vermistera on them since they started rooting. Now in addition, here's a bean hoy white variety. You can see what a, a typical dragon fruit cutting looks like before it roots. This one has not rooted. It needs to get plumping up once it roots and develop some new growth. But this Robles red here looked worse than that one back in March and look at the new growth on it. In fact, I was really worried. I didn't think it was going to take or survive. And now look at it. And I really think it has a lot to do with earthworm castings. So I do not use chemical fertilizers. I like to be organic and I use a high quality potting soil that is Fox Farm potting soil. Now in the past, you've seen us use these ingredients here which are all great but now that I understand the power of Vermistera and I've seen the power well I don't need to use those anymore because this has everything I need these products here contain humic acid mycorrhizal fungi and microbes beneficial nutrients they're just amazing so I can apply this weekly during the growing season and I can apply that monthly during the growing season. Now you probably could use it more, look at the low MPK, but that's what I'm doing right now. So let me show you more about it. 
So earthworm casting tea is different than compost tea because you're not gonna have to aerate this for a few days. You're not gonna have to deal with any E. coli bacteria growth and this product is shelf stable. So it will last for a year and I believe it takes them several months to make. So they probably have some interesting process that they use to create this product. Now once it's uh, watered down or diluted I should say, I like to do it three ounces per gallon. This is three ounces of it. I love this, well, I don't know if I love the scent but it has a very unique smell but what this stuff is going to do when it's diluted it's going to break down the soil uh, nutrients in that fox farm soil that back guano that they apply and it's also going to help break down that uh, salt so you can even use this as a foliar spray once i dilute it so what i like to do is i put it in here and as you can see, I leave my tap water out. Now you can use tap water straight from the hose, but I like to let mine sit out for a few days to kind of minimize uh, cold shock and, uh, to the plant roots and also to get that chlorine to kind of get out. Now, uh, get out of the water. Now the key is you want to apply it weekly and apply it a little bit over time, meaning you're not gonna necessarily see results immediately, but you're gonna want to apply this product throughout the growing season. Uh, I use it every few weeks, but again, if your plants are nutrient deficient, you can do this weekly, which is awesome. Okay, so this is cotton candy, and I just top dressed it with Burmistera earthworm castings. Now, look at the low MPK. As you can see, you can use this monthly during the growing season. Very high quality, odorless, and these are the standard, this is the standard grade, but still, it's perfect for the dragon fruit. Now, I used to use chicken uh, manure, composted chicken manure, but now I don't use that because the more I learn about soil, I'm starting to understand that chickens often eat uh, corn and soy, and that can be undigested, and that's great nitrogen for the soil. However, that will lure pests, and nematodes, which you don't want in your soil. So I'm stopping uh, chicken manure and I'm just gonna use these earthworm castings and the tea that I'm about to apply. So if your soil has issues or you have weak plants, you're definitely gonna see results quickly. I kinda just noticed my plants seem perkier or happier, I guess you could say. So now I'm gonna show you how I soil drench the soil during growing season for dragon fruit. Now, you can, again, apply it onto the plant if you wanted to, but I typically like to drench in those earthworm castings and get those beneficial microbes and bacteria and nutrients into that soil quickly. So, again, I use the earthworm castings monthly, and you can use this compost tea weekly, Burmistera compost tea. I use it every two weeks or so right now, as I experiment with it, but I see no plant burn or I see no, no negative effects at all. I love, I love this product. I'm stoked on it. So again, as I soil drench it, there we go. And now I've added some nutrient uh, rich material that has lots of beneficial microbes and bacteria and fungi. And now I don't have to worry about nutrient deficiency or hopefully less disease and pest problems because Healthy plants will usually fend off those pests and disease. So there you go. That's how I apply uh, Vermistera Earth uh, Worm Castings and their Vermistera Earth Worm Casting Tea. Is coconut coir a universal potting medium? This is not cocoa peat. That's too fine and kills plants in my experience. This is the has all three parts of the coconut husk. It has the coconut fibers, which are great for aeration. It has the coconut chips, and then it has the really fine pith, or peat, you could call it, and it's kind of more like the powder. Now having all three of those together makes an excellent growing medium. And Vermistera was gracious enough to donate some for me to try for my dragon fruit and some other plants. Now Vermistera's product is coarse, and it has all three of those textures, and it's ground up coconut husk fibers that were cleaned and processed for plants. They're sterile, and they have a pH balance of seven, which is great. So they're ready to go. They come in some big blocks and you just water them down 
and they're easy to break apart and work with. So really, if you don't water them in, you're gonna have not have fun trying to break apart these large bricks here so you can see them. So what uh, they recommended is that I can actually take three parts coconut coir to one part earthworm castings. Now, I can't believe that, and then I can use their tea. So uh, I, I was a little leery, I thought it would cause some rot. But as you can see here, this Lisa is doing great, and Lisa is more prone to rot. So I've been growing it for uh, several weeks, I think three or four now, uh, in this medium of just earthworm castings, and coconut coir. And the plant's healthy, it's got four new shoots. So now my next experiment is I wanna see what happens if I mix it with Fox Farms earthworm and casting. So I, I did Fox Farms, coconut coir, and earthworms castings for this condor cutting. And I took all three of these condor cuttings at the same day and time from the same plant. So they're very, very similar. Now this one just says Fox Farms and Coconut Coir, no castings. And then this third one, I did the Condor has Coconut Coir and castings only at a ratio of three to one. So I wanna see how these plants respond to this product here, or Fox Farms and or these earthworm castings. So uh, the reason why these, this product is so great, coconut coir, is great for dragon fruit, in my opinion, is because its pH balance is seven, it will have some potassium, and it's easy to use when it's saturated with water. So I'm excited to see the results. I'll keep you updated, but I haven't seen much information online of people using coconut coir, this type, for their dragon fruit. And so far, I'm not seeing any uh, rot, and I'm liking the results. Hey everybody, this is Paul, and as you can see, these plants are happy. Now, this is the results of my experiment, and I'm gonna teach you how I make my version two growing media now that I've been spending this season working with Vermistera. Now, first off the bat, I didn't believe that this would work, <laughs> but they proved me wrong. This is three parts coconut coir to one part earthworm castings. And the Lisa is just as large as the other cuttings with new growth, as you can see, compared to my soil mixtures. So wow, that's pretty cool. Two ingredients in that growing media and these plants seem happy. Now, in addition, I also tried to root these really young immature condor cuttings, which normally sometimes will rot. People would say, hey, they would never recommend or sell these, so don't ever buy dragon fruit cuttings this size, please. I mean, if they give them to you, that's fine. But look, I got them to root. So that's just coconut coir and earthworm castings. And these are my growing media. So in just four weeks, they've all rooted and they're doing great. They're plumping up already. So let me go show you how and why I've revised my soil mix. So basically this is what it looks like when it's done. The only problem is I cannot hunt down any pumice. I like to add a little bit of pumice. I can't source it anywhere. I guess it's a supply chain issue or something. So here we go. Let me show you how to do this. Now, first you gotta take your coconut coir and make sure it's ready for plant material and has all three parts, the pith, the husk, and the chips. And you get it wet and then Get it nice and broken down like that. That's your first step. Step two, I'm gonna add plenty of worm castings to this. About three to one, maybe four parts to one or so. Remember, you don't wanna breathe any of this, so I like to just let it kind of dissipate. All right. Okay, so you don't breathe that, that's step one. Next, you gotta add some permit. Make sure it's OMRI certified or organic. And you actually probably should 
you should rinse it out beforehand but today I'm not gonna do that but this is really good stuff I believe it's been clean but it is a good rule to wash it for life okay next I'm gonna add some vermiculite this will add soil uh, moisture retention it will keep your soil loose and definitely add some minor trace minerals and nutrients so that's the next step okay so now the most critical step is using a high quality potting soil i really like happy frogs potting soil by fox farms that's what i use here we go i like to make it about 50 percent 50 50. be good all right so here is my tool of choice and again you don't want to breathe this I'm, I'm gonna be holding my breath and walking away it looks weird but uh, people have died from inhaling the I guess the mushrooms and fungi that are in maybe potting soil that sat in the Sun so be careful when working with it and again wear a mask or hold your breath like I do Whew, so there you go. That's what it looks like. Dry. And I honestly can set wet cuttings into this if I keep it out of the water in full shade and it will not rot them. And then after about a week, 10 days, I start watering them lightly on the plant flesh and the root, not a problem. Good morning, this is Paul. And thanks for checking out our raised garden bed. And here is an update on the soil drama. So basically, this thing has had stunted growth compared to everything else in the collection. And it has different varieties, which is not a concern right now. I mean, maybe in time. But there is plenty of volume and all the roots can leave and go into the native soil below. There's just some gopher wire at the base. So anyways, for some reason, everything is stunted in here and the pH has increased, was increased over eight and a half and went off the scale that I have. So I've been working with Vermistera for the past six weeks on ways to decrease the pH and increase the growth. And I did notice that the color did improve right away. They were more yellow. And I would also like to clarify that before I said that that is a base of perlite and all Fox Farm soil, I went back in my notes and did, I must say I, it's 75% Fox Farms Ocean Forest and it's about 20% Kellogg Organic Palm Cactus Mix, which I do not like to use for dragon fruit at all anymore. But back then when I was new to this, I, that's what I used. And I also did apply 5% of composted chicken manure, which does add a, a lot of nitrogen early into the uh, soil early on, but after in time, it's not the best uh, way to add nitrogen to your soil. But anyways, Vermistera has been helping me for the past six weeks, and you can see there is some new growth here on this delight. Looks a lot happier. So definitely they've had some new growth, and the color has improved, but still, they're slower compared to everything else, and it is the end of the season now. But what Vermistera has recommended is that I've applied earthworm castings one, one to two times per month and I just toss it in, top coat it and I did it last week so I don't need to do it again for a, a little bit. They've also recommended that I install these wonderful hydro spirals which I'll do an episode on when I install this last one and show you how 
I put them in, which I'll do that soon. And the most important factor, because the earthworm castings are a pH of seven, but the T is a pH of four. So I think this earthworm casting T by Vermistera has really helped improve the soil quality and bring down that pH. So you can see, here is the pH tester and it says that it's gone down and it's about seven and a half or so. I need a better meter, this thing's kind of cheap. But it has gone down in the past six weeks and I think uh, in wet or dry soil, it doesn't really matter. The reading is the same. But you can see, I think Vermistera has helped. And I'm looking forward to see what happens next season with all these varieties. Now, I did also want to mention that if you use Bloom or other fertilizers, I've talked to Vermistera, and they recommend that the tea, to, it, it works great with those fertilizers, you just need to use 50 to 70% less tea because it's gonna increase the rate of breakdown for the nutrients. So in other words, the nutrients will break down in the soil quicker with Bloom and Vermistera. You just need to use less of the tea. Now what I really think is happening to this raised garden bed is the pH is increased because it's a carbon versus nitrogen issue. In other words, I think the carbon has kind of decreased and so the plant is giving off nitrogen into the soil to kind of cope with that deficiency of the carbon. So we'll see what happens. I'm just going to continue this for a little bit longer this season, but it is approaching winter in Southern California, so I'm going to just let the plants be and turn off the drip. That's usually what I do. Good morning, this is Paul, and today I'm going to show you how I install the Vermistera Hydra Spirals, the deep irrigation tubes, into my raised garden bed here. Now I have several varieties of dragon fruit, and this, they've been a little bit stunted in growth this season. So I'm working on improving the soil, and using these should um, improve as well. Now the reason why you can see is that it's going to increase water and oxygen to the root zone, and the roots are going to go grow broader and deeper with time into your growing media or your raised garden bed. And it's going to basically change the environment of your soil and you're going to add beneficial microbes here by using Vermistera's earthworm castings T on the right and their earthworm castings here on the left. Now using all of these in combination should improve the growth rate of my dragon fruit varieties here. So I'm gonna add this last hydro spiral here. You can see here's the product itself. So it's made uh, out of, it's three inches wide, or in, I guess in diameter, and nine inches in length. You can see here what it's designed to do is it's anti-clogging, and it's made with a recycled polyethylene plastic. So it's very, very, sturdy very dense and it's going to be long lasting here you can see i'm squeezing it as hard as i can I'm not doing anything to it so let me show you how i'm going to install it right here and what i'm going to do next to get it into the soil and ready to use okay so let me show you how i install this so i first pull out the cap and then i select a nice spot and you could use an auger, but in this case, I'm just going to use the shovel here. And let's do it. So I, I try not to damage the existing roots. Try to be careful. So that way, this will start having some benefits sooner than later. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. So that's a good depth. I want to make sure I backfill it so it's level. You can 
see I did damage some of the roots. Nothing too my major. And there we go. Okay, so now it's vital to add gravel to this top component because it's gonna prevent dust or leaf material from building up into it and clogging the holes. And you want the oxygen to increase down to the root zone. That is the main goal with this tool for a raised garden bed. So now that's also going to slow down the water into the into the spiral so it will work as intended. So the last step is I like to use these adjustable drippers. And I use dig. There you go. And the key is that you want something, you can get 180 degree patterns if you want as well. But the key is you want something from uh, three to eight gallons per hour. So as you can see, I like to use these adjustable ones as needed. And in addition, I use some micro tubing stakes. So using those together, I set this up. Key is you want it to just kind of spread out into the hydro spider, into the hydro spiral. Excuse me. Okay, that's gonna work out well. Let's go turn on the water and check it out. But before we do, actually, let me show you what it kind of how it's gonna function. So the water is gonna go in. spirals down it's going to disperse it deeper into the soil awesome in addition I forgot to mention I can actually use Brumster's earthworm casting tea and apply it directly into the hydro spiral and that is going to increase your beneficial microbes and fungi and those essential nutrients for your plants directly into the root zone. So that is excellent. Okay, let me go show you what it looks like when the dripper is turned on. So there it is. I think that's the perfect rate in my humble opinion. So it's a little loose here. I wish I had it centered. There we go. So remember, you want to have it slow and low and let it just flow for a few hours, maybe 20 to 24 gallons, I would say. So eight gallons an hour, three hours. And you're gonna get really wonderful, happy plants in a raised garden bed. And in this case with dragon fruit, you can see that the roots have already entered into the hydrospirals, which is exactly what I want with these epiphytic roots. They're gonna wanna gather those, the water and nutrients uh, directly from the hydrospiral, and then they're gonna dry out and they're gonna be really happy. So I was really pleased to see that, as well as just overall the results with these hydrospirals and how they work already. You can see here, here's one that is overflowing. So I need to adjust that because that's just not beneficial. In other words, I want more of that water to channel directly into the hydro spiral to get deeper into my raised garden bed. So there you go. Vermisteros hydro spiral in action and the crop that they are taking care of or growing, helping to grow, are different varieties of Hilo series dragon fruit. Okay, give us a like, subscribe, thanks for watching, and have yourself a wonderful day.